the party is the f***ing best. Let's go! The Costa Serena is one of the world's most spectacular cruise ships. Famous throughout Europe, she is part of an award-winning green fleet. She is longer than the London Bridge, her decks cover more space than 20 football fields, and she can carry almost 3,800 passengers on each cruise. The 1,000 crew members, all of whom spend most of their lives at sea, are pushing hard to maintain the gruelling pace. Very frustrating for me. No, 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 no. We work here, but we leave here. This cruise, Captain Russo and his team will balance fatigue and frustration. With bad weather, demanding guests, wild entertainers and medical emergencies, some unexpected challenges are set to rock this boat. This is the job. In a week of unrivaled chaos. This is cruise ship life as never seen before. The next few weeks will test this floating city's metal and will reveal exactly what it's like to live and work on one of the ocean's true giants. This is Cruise Ship Diaries. It's Sunday in the Italian city of Venice, and Europe's 115,000-ton supercruiser, the Costa Serena, has docked in the port. With 17 decks and a total height of 60 metres, the ship stands nearly three times higher than the Sistine Chapel. She is about to embark on a seven-day cruise across the Mediterranean. And while the crew prepare the 14 guest decks, over 20 entertainment areas, including 13 bars for the 3,800 cruisers who will soon board, Chief Engineer Francesco Iorio is planning the week ahead. Francesco has reached the end of this contract and will disembark at the close of this cruise. He has just seven days to inspect all the ship's technical areas and ensure that everything is in perfect working order before he hands over to his replacement. With about 25,000 square meters dedicated to technical functioning, Francesco will be working long hours. The technical team have all been briefed and maintenance will be stepped up. Francesco wants this ship in shape. The workshops will all be busy. The engines, the sewage plant, waste processing areas and about 1,500 kilometres of cabling will be under close scrutiny. Today, cabling is a major focus for Andrea Moscatelli. He is third deck officer on board and one of his duties is to eliminate vermin. Right now, he's on rat duty. Andrea knows that just one rat could bring down the entire ship. He must inspect each potential rat lair and lay traps. Cables and ropes are particularly vulnerable. Special discs called rat guards are placed on mooring ropes to prevent rats from running up the ropes and onto the ship. Hotel director Attilio Sisa is also focused on pest control this morning. The winter season has recently begun and with a change in menu and some new suppliers, Attilio wants to check the stock himself. He won't take any chances when it comes to consumable goods. He has informed Director of Services Edouard and his assistant Rob that he will personally inspect the galley and all the food storage areas. Attilio doesn't tolerate pests of any variety. Paola, the assistant cruise director, is doing some dirty work this morning. A staff member has not been meeting Attilio's standards and will be asked to leave. At the moment, uh, considering that we need to have certain standards, we really cannot keep you here. Probably you're not meant to work on a ship. Don't take it personally. It's nothing against you as a person. I just believe that this is probably not your place. The rest of Paola's entertainment team are preparing their schedules. This cruise, they have more than six specialised groups on board and one particularly large dance troupe who have already made a number of unusual requests. I think it's probably the busiest cruise that we've had since I've been here. We have one big group of tango dancers with their instructors and they have tango lessons around the ship all day long, dancing tango, tango, tango. And more tango in the evening, so tango everywhere. The dance group have already boarded with their private orchestra 
and have booked the theatre for rehearsals. This is something, something different, something exceptional, causing a little bit, uh, or needing a little bit of special attention from all departments. There is nothing that we cannot handle. They will perform an Argentinian tango spectacle on the last night of the cruise and have asked for as much time on stage as possible. In honour of the tango group, this is the week of all things Argentinian. A gala feast has been planned and Edward and Rob are organising the themed menus. Some traditional Argentinian dishes will take over 12 hours to prepare and it will take all their chefs to pull it off. On deck 11, the chefs of the Club Baco restaurant are waiting for a celebrity guest. Today, this speciality restaurant is strictly out of bounds. Legendary chef Ettore Bocchia, who developed the unique Club Baco menu, is boarding for just a few hours to update the chefs with his latest culinary inventions. Chef Bocchia is internationally renowned for his scientific approach to cuisine, a style known as molecular gastronomy. Today, the chefs will have a limited time to learn from him. He has left his top Italian hotel restaurant to join them in Venice for this morning only. He has brought his own supplies and will be cooking with some unusual ingredients, like liquid nitrogen. This is not for the inexperienced. Recently, a keen follower of the style blew off both his hands attempting to create this dessert. Today, they'll be making the infamous liquid nitrogen sorbet with a fruity twist for the new season. This recipe was developed using the scientific principles of molecular gastronomy. Liquid nitrogen is added to fruit pulp and mixed vigorously. The pulp is left in a creamy, frozen state. It's safely completed. Loading is well underway. Most consumables have arrived and it's now time for the onboard boutiques to take on stock. The crew knows that their Argentinian guests usually like to spend, and so they're making sure that the outlets have much on offer. The stores on board sell everything from diamonds and rubies to fine crystal and watches. Nearly a quarter million euros worth of goods are being loaded today. Much to the tango group's dismay, they have to leave the theater. There are other acts that will perform on this cruise, each needing rehearsal time on stage. Sergio and Martha Martinez are up next. They're known as the Dancing Gauchos, an act that also hails from Argentina. The husband and wife team have been living on the Costa Serena for over seven months and perform a daring acrobatic and dance routine once a week. You haven't done it for three or four days, eh? Because we had a movie <laughs> going. I was born into a family of circus performers. Um, my mother trained me in acrobatics, and um, my father was a bareback rider. The couple live in Las Vegas when not touring, and have been together for over 25 years. And I believe it was love at first sight. We are so, so great, so happy to be together, traveling together, see the world together, working together. She's a She's a wonderful performer, you know, and she, she's risking her life every day. I'm nervous every day, but uh, of course I don't show her. <laughs> it's part of the job. <laughs> it's dangerous. You have to be very careful. You have to be very professional and very responsible because you, your life is in your hands. Performing such a dangerous act means that the gauchos are at risk if the sea is rough. This is something they'll have to be prepared for this week. Euros. Captain Russo has just received the weather forecast and has called Francesco to warn him. Uh, okay, this is uh, the weather forecast uh, for the Apart from the obvious dangers of a rocking ship, there are also technical implications. Francesco and the officers will have to calculate the best strategies for limiting the movement of the vessel. Christian Catunio, the captain's second officer, is on the bridge adjusting the course of the ship, taking the bad weather into account. 
Christian has been sailing for 20 years and knows that rough seas can ruin any cruise. Being prepared is what counts. The problem is the wind because of uh, the shape of the vessel. So it makes like a big sail. And when there is this kind of wind, like 100 knots, there is nothing to do. And it's not so nice. So for example, you have to cancel all the shows. The officers know that cancelling the shows on this cruise is not an option. The tango must go on, and the stage performances are a major part of the entertainment programme. They're strategizing about how best to deal with the bad weather ahead. They have a few options, and stabilizers will play a large role. Stabilizers are like uh, the wings of the airplane that are coming out from the centre of the ship's hull, uh, three metres below the sea, and uh, the length of these stabilizers is 15 metres. If there is bad weather, big waves, you can face it, you can face them better. Another option is filling the ballast tanks. There are 13 tanks on board, each holding up to 600 tonnes of water. They can be filled to make the ship heavier and more stable. But operating a heavier, more stable ship comes at a price. The more weight you put on the ship, the more, uh, the more petrol you need to, to run the ship. Fuel consumption is closely monitored and the officers will only make the call to up consumption if absolutely necessary. In this case, they have no option and will probably use far more fuel on this cruise. It's almost time for the Costa Serena to leave the port of Venice. The last guests are on the ship and the crew are as ready as they can be for the cruise ahead. This trip marks the last seven days of this itinerary. Next week, when the ship leaves Venice for the last time, she'll be moving on to new waters. As the sun sets on the city of Venice, the Serena and her 3,800 guests prepare to set off on their Mediterranean adventure. It's early morning and the Costa Serena is approaching the Italian port of Bari. Many crew members have already been working for several hours. Some staff work 16-hour days, like members of the entertainment team led by Beppe de Michele, for whom it's not uncommon to get to bed at 3am. The staff are feeling tired and some are finding the route tedious. The ship has been sailing the same seven-day itinerary for 30 weeks. The ship is in port for, let's say, short times. So we don't get the chance to go out very often. <laughs> We're all dying for something different. Beppe has been particularly down. He was recently disciplined for his overexcitable approach to guests. He just has have to learn a little bit how to deal with communication. We had some visitors on board. They were tra travel agent, and they were two very uh, good-looking blonde ladies. And he went to them, I know you are looking for me. Like this. This morning, Beppe is fairly upbeat. It's his birthday tomorrow. He's planning a get-together in his office, and he's also looking forward to following the progress of the dance troupe on board. This week, we have the tango group. Special. Mm, the beautiful teacher. Mm. In the Jove Theatre, Bashir, the new singer, is under pressure. Excuse me. Don't sing into yourself, bring it out again. Since Bashir's arrival, the cast, particularly the female lead singer Renee, have been hugely disappointed with his performance. You've got to look and say, Cheryl, Heather, Anna, just make up a name if you don't. I just think it's unfair. I arrive here, I know my stuff, I break my balls to be the best. There were three dancers that went like this to absolutely nothing. I mean, they feel like, you know, they've danced their asses off and you don't even acknowledge it. It takes one weak link to bring down the whole level of the show. 
And that's what makes me really angry. But I mean, just make up a name at least, you know what I mean? Say, Muna or Jake. Tanya or something at least. I just have to grip my teeth and smile and bear it. If Bashir doesn't crack it, he could be fired. As the ship approaches the port of Bari, there is tension on the bridge. Nobody will explain, but it seems the officers are in a serious hurry to dock today. The security team is agitated, and the staff in the hospital on deck zero confirm they are dealing with a serious medical emergency. Guests are unaware of the drama. Captain Russo quickly swings a ship into position. The mooring team are ready with the exit ramps even before the ship docks. The reason for the tension soon becomes clear as paramedics prepare to board the ship. The medical team must push past the disembarking cruisers to get to the hospital. A passenger collapsed just an hour ago. When she was found, she had no memory of her identity or her location. While the onboard hospital is fully equipped for emergencies, the nurses fear she may have been suffering a series of strokes. They've done all they can. She must be rushed to a clinic nearby for urgent treatment. It's a sudden and unpleasant end to the cruise for this guest. With the patient safely off the ship, the crew turns their attention to disembarkation. Beppe is impatient to finish his duties. He has a special delivery waiting for him in the terminal building. His parents, who live close to the port, will come on board and join him for a pre-birthday lunch today. <laughs> the, the good part of this job is to be on the ship and everything that is related to the ship. But the, the, there is also not everything is beautiful. Many, many, many of them are missing the family. If you have a girlfriend, a wife, and one day when we have children, you know, it's not the best thing. And stay far away from your parents. And What I am missing is really the affection that you might have in your home or with the people that you like a lot. <laughs> Beppe has taken the rest of the morning off to enjoy some downtime with his parents. There is no time off for the tango group. They begin tangoing early and are taking their dance classes very seriously. They've also been putting some pressure on the crew. Tango group seems to be, uh, let's say, pretty demanding. <laughs> Requests and last minutes, I want this, I want that. But one thing though will be very nice, uh, the last day, we're going to have a tango menu. We're going to have an Argentinian beautiful menu. Preparation for the special feast has already begun. It's here in the galley. Hotel director Attilio Sisa has decided to concentrate his sanitation and pest patrol. The crew knows that Attilio takes his inspections very seriously and that he is a harsh taskmaster. Attilio has asked Rob to accompany him and take notes. Sisa is someone who has a personality that is just perfect for his role. I don't think there's an off switch to him. Not at all. Errol goes back and they don't have to be on the floor. The back end, they don't have to be on the floor. Now you have to wash them. Put them together with the dirty stuff and you don't wash them. Huh? Why do they keep them on the floor? It's just something that you really need in, uh, in upper management sometimes, is that ability to, to energize other people. They are supposed to know the reason why they cannot be on the floor. If they don't know which is the reason why, they will never learn. Attilio has chosen to start the inspection in the dishwashing area. The galley will wash over 430,000 dishes this cruise, and the giant dishwashers can clean about 3,500 dishes per hour. To keep her green status, 
The ship must comply with the highest international environmental standards. Only environmentally friendly detergents are permitted. The ship employs an environmental officer, Martino Pellegrini, to oversee all waste management and enviro compliance procedures. It's Martino's job to ensure that all departments on board stick to the rules when it comes to sorting and getting rid of waste. Strict rules apply throughout the ship. Even the treatments and products in the beauty spa must be approved by Martino. Waste is meticulously sorted. Glass is crushed and the shards are stored and offloaded in port for recycling. The Serena does not dump the crushed glass at sea. Much of the trash is pulped or shredded. All aluminium cans are crushed and compressed. They're offloaded with the other compressed trash once the ship is docked. The waste management team will offload about 64 cubic meters of trash this week. <laughs> Bebe can't wait until tomorrow to open his birthday gifts. His mum has also brought him some of his favorite treats from their hometown. <laughs> Beppi only has about one more hour to spend with his parents. They will have to disembark before the ship leaves the port. Paola has had a busy morning. Special requests from several of the large groups have kept her on her toes. Hey, we were waiting for you. <laughs> She's managed to find half an hour to have lunch with her colleagues and friends, the dancing gauchos. It's fun. The gauchos are enjoying forced downtime. The theatre is occupied and they can't use a stage. Paola is on the move once again. There is a well-known French photographer on board who has been making some interesting requests. We knew about him coming on board, but we were not informed in advance about all his requests. He's asking for models. Paola had organized for some of her staff members to pose for the photographer early this morning, but the feedback was that they were not attractive enough. I have to say my staff is quite good looking, so I don't know why this man is complaining, because they all are. She's asking the dancers if some of them would take a rehearsal break and participate in the photo shoot. Gabor, Emma and Chantal, one of Vepi's animators, are keen and hoping they make the grade. The photographer seems happy. Almost. He wants more light on the pool deck and so has asked for the macro dome to be opened. Attilio has moved on to inspecting the galley supplies for pests. This we want to check if there are some insects inside. Did you check them before to see if there might be insects inside? Yes, sir, I see. These are the pine nuts, plastic gloves. Give me a plastic glove, please. Hurry up, guys, huh? because we don't have that much time to lose or to waste. It depends what we want to do. OK, thank you very much indeed. Now you can use them again. It's almost showtime, and Bashir is still having a hard time. I'm just going to be the best that I can. I'm just going to smile, and I'm literally going to pretend that he's not there. He's fresh air, and that's, that's it. It's a challenge for me. It's, it's, it's not easy working with her. She wants things, you know. 
I'm not into dancing. I've been forced to like, you know, to do the dancing thingy with my songs. And it's quite difficult because I'm not used to that. I've tried the shouting, I've tried the crying, I've tried the screaming, I've tried the talking nicely, I've tried licking his ass, I've tried helping him, teaching him, I've tried talking in baby language. It doesn't work, so I've just given up. You were sick. Sorry. I know I sound like a bitch, but nobody understands unless, you were, unless you're in my shoes, you know, on stage all the time with this guy, you know. It's really frustrating. It doesn't look professional with him going, ah, oh, no, blah, blah, and, so, and then missing our three singers. I'll write their names mm -hmm. and I'll say. You know, when the, the ladies have on makeup, then you try to look at their faces and then they all just look the same. So, but that is the in your problem. eyes, they all look the same. You know, makeup is another story, mate. No, yeah. makeup is not another story. Okay. Okay. The audience seems to enjoy the show, but Bashir is still unpopular. I've showed him, I've asked him what to do and I don't know. I just won't talk, Lindsay, because when I talk, I start getting really angry. So I'm just going to keep quiet and let's just see what happens, because I can talk till the cars come home. <laughs> the weather has held out for the last few days, but the stormy skies have caught up with the Costa Serena. The crew knows that when the weather is bad, they must work extra hard to keep guests happy. The rest of the crews will be tough. Captain Russo is expecting a mighty storm tonight, and Chief Engineer Francesco is planning to use the ship's stabilizers to limit the rocking. Victor Polo knows all about the woes of seasick guests. He is a bar waiter from Peru and works in the main lobby. He often has to console disgruntled passengers, particularly when chilly weather has forced them inside and straight to the bar. Victor is rushing to finish his shift early. The ship will be docking in the Greek port of Katakalon soon, and he and some of his friends have planned to visit the ancient ruins of Olympia today. The bar staff seldom get to leave the ship. The Serena has been on the same itinerary for 30 weeks. And this is Victor's last opportunity to visit Olympia. From next week, the ship will be sailing a different route. He and his fellow bar waiter, Teddy, have saved up so they can afford a taxi ride and entry into the historical sites. Beppi's birthday hasn't started out well. Instead of a celebratory breakfast, he and several other staff members must attend a management lecture in the business centre. So this morning, when people were tired, and I could tell, I changed things slightly. So that I could get them going on something. I supposed to be on the way out. The dancing gauchos finally have some time on stage. Their show is coming up, and with bad weather ahead, they must be confident in the execution of some of their more dangerous moves. 
If the sea is too rough, the show will have to be cancelled. It is a life-threatening act. I would probably uh, not be able to perform if it was very, very bad. Um, but for the gout track, we would probably be asked to go ahead and do whatever we can, just, you know, to have a show. I mean, I swing those boleadoras into like 40, 50 miles an hour. One time I was working in Los Angeles and I hit myself hard. My, my shirt was completely red because I really hurt myself. Another time I hurt my eye and I almost lose an eye. You can hurt yourself bad, I mean, sometimes. Bashir's performance in the stage show did not go down well. The owner of the performance agency will board at the end of this cruise to speak with him. Feeling wanted is what I miss because I've got a lot of things on my mind. It's not just, I know the show is my first priority on the show, but I mean, I've got a lot of things, a lot of responsibility. I've got four kids. I mean, like people like Renee, they don't really have responsibilities. Like, so for them, it's like, I'm just focused on this and this is what I do. And I put my mind all to that. And for me, as much as I want to do that, it's, it's not easy. The ship has docked in Catacolon, and Victor and his friends are quick to jump ship. They have just over four hours until they must be back on the Serena. Beppe has told his team to throw him a surprise birthday party. He has suggested his office at midnight. Satisfied with the aesthetics of the dance cast, the French photographer has asked Paola to arrange shoots in other locations on the ship. Heather is the muse for this shoot, and Paola the photographic assistant. Thank you. The grey weather doesn't seem to be getting in the way of Victor's outing. Attilio inspects the food storage areas carefully. Vermin and other pests are the enemy, and Attilio is prepared to wage war. For Francesco, time is running out. He must complete the shipwide inspection and maintenance before disembarking at the end of this cruise. Being chief engineer is a huge responsibility and replacing him is a serious business. Marco. Captain Russo will be disappointed to see Francesco leave. The two are not only colleagues but also old friends. As this cruise is so demanding, the chaplain on board has come up with an idea to boost morale. The chaplain is responsible for crew well-being, and apart from taking care of their multi-faith spiritual needs, he provides in other ways. His flock are never short of the latest DVD releases, and he organises social events like crew karaoke. He's decided to host a crew party on the last night of the cruise to keep spirits up. No cockroaches to spoil Attilio's day, so far. If they are alive, they are coming on the true face. If they are not alive, we have to shake them and see if they are coming out some way.
How many, how many, how many degrees is supposed to be? No, it cannot be 30 or 25. You have to take the, the food temperature. If it... Okay. Victor and Teddy must head back to the ship. Their shift starts soon, and there's only just time to grab something to eat. Back, back to the normal life. Okay, see you later. See you later. Check As the ship leaves Catacolon, the weather is doing its best to rain on everyone's parade. Guests are complaining that the television signal in their cabins is intermittent. The ship has an onboard television unit that is responsible for facilitating the broadcast of outside channels. The crew also film events that are broadcast throughout the ship on the Serena's own internal TV channel. Mirko, the director of the television station, climbs inside the satellite receiver to see if there's anything he can do to improve the outside reception. Beppi hasn't received any birthday gifts from his colleagues yet. Perhaps his team will make up for it tonight at a surprise party. Careful when you swing me tonight because that, that new light is kind of scary for me. The gauchos have done all they can to prepare for the weather ahead. If the stage is rocking too much during the performance, they will leave out the acrobatics. It's a decision they can only make as the show begins. We feel like, oh, opening night. We're nervous, like, like first time in our life, and we've been doing this for 20 years. The boutiques are busy. Nothing like some retail therapy to make up for grey skies. The captain and his team have the ship under control. Although the storm is fierce, the stabilizers and the full ballast tanks are keeping things steady. The gauchos can complete the show. Beppi's entertainment team are ready and waiting. He has told them that he will arrive at midnight. The decor, cake and gifts are lined up.
Beppe and the team decide that the nightclub would be a good place to continue the birthday celebrations. On the bridge, Christian has things under control. The weather has improved and Captain Russo is taking care of some important business. Francesco, the chief engineer, will disembark tomorrow and the two friends have decided to spend some downtime together before Francesco leaves. The captain has challenged him to a duel on the ship's Grand Prix race simulator. The simulator was produced from an original Grand Prix race car using advanced real-time vehicle modelling the same software and technology used by Grand Prix champion drivers themselves in training. Usually reserved for guests only, Francesco and the captain want a piece of the action. Preparation for the Argentinian feast is going well. The dancing gauchos will disembark when the ship arrives in Venice tomorrow. After over seven months on board, packing will take time. Anyway, okay. this is what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I was so thin. It was in the Costa Concordia. Francesco is in the lead, and the captain is battling to beat his time. Go <laughs> man. We will come, uh, we'll come back. Because you drive, and your drive is your, uh, is your job. No, but I drive the ship, not the car. Uh, it's the uh, same thing. So we are even. Ciao! See you! Oh, no. No. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to open the door. The staff are busy decorating the baggage hold for the chaplain's crew party tonight. He has sent out the memo and is hoping for a full house. The French photographer is after his final close-up. On the pool deck, the sexy legs competition is providing some indoor entertainment. Prep for the tango spectacular is almost complete. Everything is set for a night of Argentine action. Guests eager to savour the Argentine experience, the galley is heating up. The chefs must be ready to serve some 3,000 people minutes from now. It's a memorable night for everyone. The spotlight is now on tango. Big applause! Grande applause! It seems waste management 
is a popular theme. With no alcohol permitted in the luggage area, the chaplain's crew party is not as well attended as he had hoped. It seems staff have found the party elsewhere. Yes, the party is the f***ing best. <laughs> A clear Venetian winter morning marks the end of a jam-packed cruise and a new beginning for Martha and Sergio. They're going home. With renewed energy and a brand new itinerary, the crew face an unusual week ahead. New experiences, trials, tears and tantrums as Captain Russo prepares to say goodbye. A week never to be forgotten. Next, <laughs> Next time on Cruise Ship Diaries. <laughs> <laughs>